Normally, I wouldn't make a video about a software update. I mean, we're moving from version 3.8 to 3.9, hoo, hoo, hoo. but this one from Axadraw is something quite special and, in my opinion, a little bit of a game changer, or at least as much as something can be in the tiny little niche that we're in. And the update is hidden line removal, which is great for artists and designers, for people just starting out to code, and it's not just for the Axadraw either, it's useful for other drawing machines too. I will show you over at the desk. First, what's hidden line removal? It's this simple. If we draw a square and then another square over the top, it'll look just like this because the lines behind are hidden. And if you print it, this is what you'll get. Save as a JPEG, this is what you get. But say you're an artist and you make a beautiful flower like this with a bee, and sure, why not? And then you send that to the pen plotter and go, hey, pen plot, please do this. It'll look like this. Because pen plotters, they don't care about your fills, they just love lines and only the lines. And the number of times I've had to say to artists, oh, you just need to remove all the lines in the background, can you just do that? And that's the point where artists bail, because they're not just doing simple things like flowers and bees, they're doing really complex stuff, and sometimes that's too much. So coming at this from a coding angle, I then have to figure out which lines to break up and then which ones to throw away and which ones to keep what's behind other things. And I mean, I'm a competent coder, but when I look at a design like this, there's lots and lots of rectangles over the top of each other, I just can't be bothered because it's a pain in the ass. And I've done hidden line removal before. So this is what it looks like when reviewing all the lines, and then I have to work out which ones to throw away to get us back to this. And if you're a beginner coder, it's just horrible. Okay, so Evil Man Scientist have just released their update for their Inkscape plugin, the command line tool, and the Python library. And we'll look at just the first two. So here's the Inkscape version. Let me walk you through it. We're going to go up to the extensions with the axe draw control. Things are dotted around over several different places. So first we'll go to options, then to the config. You're going to pick the size of pen plotter that you're using. So I'm using an A3, so I'm going to do that. If you're using a different drawing machine, just match the size. I'm going to pop over to advance. This is where your hidden line removal is. So you turn that on. I'm going to also optimize. So I'm going to change this to allow full path optimization just to speed things up a little bit. Over in notifications, a little bit of a weird place for it, but I'm going to change our preview to just show the pen up movement. I'll show you that in just a tick. And then we're done for over here. If I go back to plot and then click on preview mode and then apply, that told us it took um, well, 0.43 seconds to optimize. I'm gonna click on okay there, close that, go over to our layers turn the main one off and then this is our preview here. So this is our new pen down movement. It's got rid of all the other lines. If we now go plot this, now we can see this is plotted how we would imagine it would plot, not like this thing over here. This is much, much better. And that only took a few seconds to calculate. We'll come up with some more complicated ones later. Also, this is how it looks like on the command line. Here we are in the terminal. I'm going to go to my downloads folder, and then I'm just going to go XC, my B file, and turn hiding on. I'm also going to tell it which model of Axadraw I am. And then that's all I need to do hidden line removal. Let's just preview that and report time. There we go, we're done. Now, I have a confession to make. This machine here, this laptop, I've updated, but this laptop isn't connected to those Axidraw machines over there. This, which is actually connected to my Axidraws, is still running the older version of the software. So this machine can't do the hidden line removal, which brings us to, back to the command line, a different way of doing things that instead of sending things to the plotter, actually writes out a file that you can then use to send to the plotter. On the command line, it looks like this. I'm gonna use the shorthand version of it. Don't worry about this too much. But if I go Axidraw B SPG, and then a whole bunch of stuff,
which is basically telling it which model that I'm using. I want it optimized. I want you to remove hidden files and I want you to spit out this be good file over here. And then that's going to give me a new file that I can then send to that machine and use. That was a little bit nerdy and codey, and you don't have to do that, although you can do it in Python as well if you want to go the pure code route. But back to Inkscape, the other useful thing is just going to file, save a copy. We're going to call it be good. And then down here, select Axedraw Plorb, P L O B. And then just hit save. And now we get this dialog back up again. We're going to pick the model. I'm going to do optimization, full, and then turn this hidden line remover on again, and then hit OK. Yeah, I'm going to replace that one. And now what that's going to do, it's going to do all the hidden line removal and save a new SVG file that you can then use to send to another machine. So this is really useful for when you want to plot a number of the results, but you only want to do the hidden line removal once. You do it here, end up with the resulting SVG, send that to all your different machines, and then get them to pen plot. And they don't even need to be Axedraw machines. You can use that SVG file with different drawing machines as well. So really useful, even if you don't have an Axedraw. What we now have, which is useful, is these three types of shapes. The first, what we've always had, is a shape that's just an outline. The second is an outline with a fill. And the third one is a shape that's just a fill. And I call these now helper shapes. For example, if you had all these lines and then you wanted a circle cut out of them so you can do something else in that circle, plot something else, paint something, draw something, then you can use a filled shape that's filled in white without an outline, and now when you export this, it'll cut out all these lines. And that's something that's quite complicated to do without just an easy ability like this. Well, I can even do something more complicated. So if I have a wavy line like this, up, 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 and I stay off the edge, I don't actually want it to draw this, I want it to fill it in. So if I fill it in in white and turn the stroke off, now I'm hiding everything behind, but I don't have to actually draw that shape to do that. Another thing that I've just started doing is using those helper rectangles to actually act as margins. So these gray blocks on each side, they actually go off the page quite away. And I can change the size of these. I can make them bigger, both of these here like this. And then just using that hidden line of removal, I can throw everything away. This is really great for when you're writing designs with code, where they can easily go off the sides of the pages, and you want to crop them down just to appear on the page and not have to worry about maybe damaging the drawing machine or something. Super helpful. We'll just stick with this for a moment and use this as an example that we'll end up sending to the pen plotter, because I think it's kind of fun. I quickly wrote this code to throw a lot of overlapping squares onto a page. There's about 10,000 here. Let's just take it down to 5,000 for this example. There we go. And I've put the code for this up on GitHub and also FX Hash. I'll put the links down below if you want to go look at them. But mainly it's to put lots and lots of overlapping squares or rectangles onto the screen at once. The other really nice thing about this is it doesn't matter what color your fills are. So if you're going to use color to kind of test or debug things, you can do that. I'm just using it for decorative purposes here. But say we had these colors and they each represented like a different level. So you can see what's going on. But when you do the hidden line removal, obviously the color doesn't matter. It just gets thrown away. Like my margins are always great. So let's export this as an SVG. I'm going to go A3. We'll open that in a second. A quick coding detail, when we're right into the canvas here, we start with things in the background and then we overlap things over and over at the top. It's exactly the same in the SVG. The first thing in the SVG file will get covered up by the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. Right, over to Inkscape. I've pulled in that SVG. Our page is actually small in this gray border. Those margins are stinted out to kill off anything that overlaps the page. Let's go through the steps. File, save as, making sure we're on an extra blob. I'm gonna call these test, hit save, all of this stuff again. So the machine I'm targeting, I'm going to do full optimization, hidden line removal. I'm going to hit OK, replace the old test. And now it's beach balling. We'll just let that run. I did these squares as a test, 5,000 semi randomly placed. Takes this 2020 MacBook Pro with an M1 chip around seven to eight minutes to calculate. So we'll leave this running while I talk about pros. 
I think this is a great extra step in your workflow or tool chain. I've been testing a fair amount over the weekend and it seems to handle pretty much anything. I can use Inkscape, which I probably won't. I'll use the command line, which I'll automate it with. Or you could do it in Python if you really wanted to control everything. It really does open the door up to artists and designers who use tools like Illustrator or a bit of code. Again, I've had artists bail out at the hidden line removal part because it's just too complicated. Illustrator can probably handle it, but not everyone has that. From a coding point of view, it's one less thing for me to worry about, and it now makes me more willing to do things that I haven't done before like this. Uh, in the series of tutorials, I was going to leave hidden line removal to be an advanced topic, but now I'm like, it's not a problem at all. It's just a one button solution. The cons, it is generalized, so it's fairly slow because it has to handle everything. If you had a certain design and you knew it always fitted in with the certain boundaries, you could write faster clipping routine that targets exactly what you're doing. Because I know this is only rectangles, it never does circles, I could customize my routine to this. But if I had a different design that only used circles, I could do a different fast clipping solution because I know I'm only dealing with circles. But considering a plot can take a few hours to do and coding and debugging your own hidden line removal functions would take a while, I am absolutely fine with leaving that to Inkscape over here or the command line or Python. I can set it away, go make a cup of tea while it removes all the hidden lines and then come back. The other potential problem is sometimes I make designs that spit out two or three layers like in silver and in gold and I'm not quite sure how working with different layers works with the hidden line removal. I think you're going to have to think carefully about how you break down the steps. Like if I have silver and gold outlines on my squares, I have to do it once with all the fills, but only do the strokes on the silver and output it. And then again, doing exactly the same fills, but only doing the gold outlines. Not quite sure, may have to think that a little bit, but a little bit of planning. The other thing is if you actually want to keep stuff inside a shape, so you have lots of lines in that circle we had before, but you want to keep the lines on the inside of the circle, you can do that if you write your own clipping tools, because you can either throw away all the outside or all the inside. But with this, you would have to use some design shenanigans or again, very careful planning. And there we have it for the people who use drawing machines. All the links to the code I've talked about and the updates are down below. For artists who are friends with pen plotters, now your ability for what you can do without stressing your pen plotter friends out is so much greater. This has made things so much easier. I hope this has been useful. I'm pretty excited to tell the truth. There's a whole bunch of projects that I parked that I can now think about revisiting because I can do this. I will see you next time and may your ink never dry. I'm not doing that. That's not a good catchphrase. Okay, I'll see you next time. Bye.